Welcome to Excel Business Math Series number 35. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download this workbook. Hey, if you're in the class, go ahead to our Chapter 4 website and download this workbook. Hey, in this video, we got to calculate monthly service charge for a checking account and calculate the balance in a checkbook register. All right, first we have uh, we got to calculate the service charge for a month for a bank account. Now there's lots of different bank accounts and they all depend on your contract. But here's an example from our textbook. Uh, we had an average balance for the month of 833 bucks and we wrote uh, how many checks? 38. Here's the little schedule. Average balance if it's less than 500 we pay a flat fee of 12 bucks and 20 cents per check. Hey, if it's between $500 up to $999.99, $7.50 flat fee and 20 cents. By the way, this is a little bit different than the textbook. The textbook had $5,000 up to $2,000, but they're never going to give you a problem in the book that doesn't fit into one of these categories. So I went ahead and made these mutually exclusive categories, which means uh, you can't have a $2,000 here and here. The $2,000 is only in this category. So. How are we going to calculate given this and this? Well, our maintenance charge per month, uh, we actually have to take this and look through here and which category does it fit into? Oh, this one right here, 500 up to 999, $199.99. So that's in between, so it's this one, so it's 750. So I'm going to click in this cell and type equals, click on that 750 and then enter, enter. Now, charge per check. Oh, it's the same thing. We've already determined which line except for, oh, it's 20 cents. So here I'm going to say equals. Get that 20 cents. Enter. Now, what is the per check charge? And these are terms exactly from our textbook. Um, checks written times uh, charge per check. Hey, it's 38 times 20 cents. Now, if you multiply 38 times 20 pennies, you're never going to get a fraction of a penny. Remember, we talked a lot so far in this class about the round function. But our rule has been if we're multiplying or dividing decimals, just use the round function. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that here because um, I'm going to uh, blindly apply that rule always. Because if I even have used the round function here and I don't get a rounding error, which the round function corrects, it doesn't matter. Like Even if I don't need it, I can still use it. So I'm going to apply my rule. Multiply and divide in decimals, and I'm using money where you're required to round to the penny, and I am going to use this in some subsequent calculation, so I'm going to round. Equals round, and the number for us is going to be a formula. Hey, number of checks times the charge per check, comma, and then it says how many digits? It's two. We've studied this many times in this class. Uh, we're, we always have to round to the penny, and since um, the penny is from the decimal 1, 2, that's what we're going to use. And sure enough, the charge is 760. Now, how do we add this up? Well, there's two ways. We can go equals this cell plus this cell, which is fine here. We talked about the sum function for uh, a range of cells you're adding that are all next to each other, but these cells aren't next to each other. You could use that one. I'm going to click Escape. Another one is to use our keyboard shortcut Alt equals for auto sum, and then it guesses wrong, and you just click on this cell. And to get this cell also, you can either type a comma like that, or let's do this again. You can click on this cell and hold control. What's nice about the control key is then you can hold control, and if you had a bunch of cells all not next to each other, you could go click, 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 and they would all. Uh, go in. The, the control, in essence, lets you select areas not next to each other. All right, I'm going to hit Enter. So there's our total, 1510. All right, let's do our next one. Oh, 3,149. So I have to go up here and decide which category I'm going to be in. 3,000. So there it is, uh, 2,000 up to 4,000. So the 3,000, whatever it was, is somewhere in between here. So I need a 5 bucks for the flat fee and 10 cents per check. I'm going to type equals, scroll up, and get my 5, enter, enter. Now here I need that 10 cents, equals, 10 cents, boop, enter, enter. 
Now, how do we uh, calculate our per check charge? Equals round. And I'm going to say, oh yeah, 64 checks times 10 cents, comma, 2, close parentheses. Enter. Now, how do I add this up? You can do it one of two ways. I'm going to Alt equals, click on the 5 bucks, hold Control, and click on the 640. And Enter, 1040. Now, let's go down and do our next one. Oh, the average balance, 9,522 bucks. Let's go up to the top. Oh, ding, ding, ding. We don't get charged anything, right? So 5,000 or more, so we just get 0, 0. This one's easy. I got a 0 there. I got a 0 everywhere. So what's the monthly service charge? I'm just going to type 0 in. Bing. There we go. Now we have one more here. Uh, $50.25 is our average balance. I'll go up to the top. Oh, it's less than 500. So we have a $12.20. I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to say equals, get that 12, enter, enter. Here's the per check, equals, go up and get that uh, 20 cents, enter, enter. Now, i got to show you um, a great trick here. Have you noticed that these are all set up the same way? The, the labels over here and the input data and all the formulas are exactly set up the same way. I'm going to go up to this, this one right here, and this is where I calculated my round. I'm going to click in that cell and hit the F2 key, which is the edit key, put it into edit mode, and it shows me range finder. Range finder is those color-coded cell references. So look, there's a blue one and a green one. But notice, this whole template is set up as the same, the same as the one below. This blue cell is what? One, two cells above, and this green cell is one cell above. Those are relative cell references. So I can actually copy this formula and paste it down there and in addition to that, I'm going to click Escape. I'm going to click here and hit F2. Those are also in the same position as the little template below. So that little cell is 1, 2, 3, 4 above, and the green one is 1 above. So watch this. I'm going to click Escape, highlight both of these, and copy Control-C. Come down here, and I'm going to click in the top cell and paste. You can do it however you want. I like to use Control-V. And just like that, I could double click it and verify. Oh, look at that. The blue one is still looking two above for this template, and the green one is looking one above. Calculated monthly service charge for a checking account at a bank. Now let's do a check register. I'm going to click on this sheet. Oh, check register. Uh, this is like the one you see in the uh, textbook. And then I'll show you one that's not in the textbook in a moment. Here's our checks. So as we write a check, we write the check number here. We write the date. We write uh, the check issued to. Oh, we're also going to list deposit. So there's no check number for that. So I list a deposit. It's another deposit. Then there's the amount of the check. And then I have date of deposit. So we have actually two date columns. And then there's the deposit amount. So we want a formula that will calculate our running balance. Now, we could just, every time we record a transaction, create a new formula. But that, um, that takes too much time in the long run. Now, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to scoot this up here. And then I'm going to highlight uh, this right here. All right, um, our formula is going to be we want one formula. Let me just show you what you do if you did it the long way, right? Oh, this is an amount for a check. Here's the balance from above. So you do a formula like this. Equals, oh yeah, the, the balance from above minus this one right here. And then the next time you come in, you go equals this one minus this one. And you would keep doing that until you got down to here. Because we're not minusing, we'd have to then add, right? So equals this one right here, minus, enter, equals this one right here, minus, enter. Oh, but this one would be equals this one right here, plus this one. Now, we can avoid having to type a new formula in each time if we notice a pattern. And here's the pattern. Uh, whenever we have a subtraction, it's in this column. Whenever we have an addition, it's in this column. However, when we're subtracting from this column, notice that there's nothing here. Subtract from this one, nothing there. 
Subtract from this one, nothing there. Same with this column, right? When there's adding, there's nothing there. So watch this. Here's the formula that will work all the way down, as long as you recognize that pattern. And there's lots of uh, examples of this where you have a situation where you can do this kind of formula. Equals whatever the balance is from above minus this checking column, which is one, two, three, four cells to my left, plus and we're going to say plus whatever is in this column. Notice there's a 0 now, so if we add 0, it doesn't do anything. But when we get down to here, this one right here, it'll take the balance, it'll uh, subtract the 0 here, but add the number here. So that is a formula that will work all the way down. And they're all relative cell references. The blue one is always looking at the balance above, and these two are always on this same row 3. I'm going to Control Enter, and I'm going to click and drag this down. Oops. Click and drag down, all the way down to the bottom. Now, that's fine and dandy, but that's kind of annoying right there. We don't want to, uh, to see this balance here. I mean, it'll work, right? If we get a new check, we get 2108. Oh, and this is on 613. And it's for um, Sue. And the check we wrote was for 50 bucks. Now watch this. When I hit Tab, this will update. Let's see how they all are like that. So is there a way? Now, if you turn, if you do something like this on your test, that's OK. But there is a, a slightly uh, better way to do this. I'm going to leave that transaction there. Um, but it r requires that we recognize a pattern. Now I'm going to click up here and hit F2. Actually, I'm going to make this column whoop, a little bit smaller so I can highlight this just so it's easier to see on the screen. Uh, well, I'm going to click here and hit the F2 key. Now, right now, we've entered this transaction. And there's a date there, right? I'm going to click here, hit F2. Oh, yeah, we're still doing these calculations. And you see how, I'm sorry, there's a date right there. I'm going to come all the way down to here. This formula is the same all the way down. But notice there's no date there. There's no date there. So the pattern we could recognize is if there's someone enters a date, then please show us the formula. If there is no date, which means the transaction hasn't been entered, then don't show me the formula. Now, in Excel, there's a symbol for blank. And really what we want, we want to do a logical test. We're going to use the if function. This is the first time we've seen the if function in this business math class. And it allows us to do one of two things. You think of a logical test. And our logical we're going to te test is, is this cell blank? Is this blank? Notice here, what's the answer? Is this cell blank? Blank means, is there something in it? If I say, is this cell blank? The answer is false. But here, if I say, is this cell blank? The answer is true. So we're going to do a true-false test. Is this relative cell reference blank? Okay, if it comes out true, what do we want to show here? We want to show nothing or blank. If it's false, which means you're asking, is this quest, is this cell blank? That would be this example up here. Is this blank? The answer is false. It's not blank. So we want to show the formula. Let me the the actual calculating part of the formula. So I want to click up here and hit highlight this whole column and hit the delete key. And now I want to do a new formula. And it's going to be an if function. Type equals if. Let's see if I can make this just like this so I can get nice and big. All right, equals if. And our uh, the if function has three parts to it. Uh, the logical test, which for us, is going to be, is this cell blank? That's a true or false test. It's either going to come out true or false. Then it, the if function, see this is the if function, the scream test says, oh, what is the thing you want me to put in the cell if it's true? And what is the thing you want me to put in the cell if it's false? So let's do our logical test first. Is that right there? And a logical test, if we're looking at a cell, we have to say equals. So right now it says, hey, is this cell equal to? And we have to know the symbol for blank. It's double quote, double quote. That's a true 
false test. It says, is that cell blank? So if that cell is blank, that is going to be true. So watch this. I type comma and watch the screen tip. Oh, value if true. What do I want in the cell if this cell right here, if this cell over here is blank? I want nothing. I, don't, I want you to show me nothing. So I'm going to put double quote. That's blank. Comma, what is the value you want if false? Remember, our test is, is this blank? So if it comes out false, it means someone has put a date here. So in that case, we want our formula, which is 1 above plus whatever's in the uh, amount of deposit column minus whatever's in the checking amount column. Now, that's the value of false, even though it's a little formula. I close parentheses. And that is our formula. Control Enter. And I'm going to copy and send this down. Notice it shows blank here. It gives us a value here. And when we come down here and type our new uh, date in, it should be uh, 10 here. Uh oh, I'm writing a check to Sue again. This one's for 150. Oh, look, it's already calculating. You've got to be kidding me. 150 bucks. Let's do one more. Now let's watch it live. This is 6 slash 14. And this is going to be to Google. Oops, I mean, sorry. 614. Before I hit tab, watch right there. As soon as I hit tab, watch right here. Boop, and it pops right up. Because as soon as we type something in here, that the logical test is false. Oh, there's something here, so show the formula. All right, and then we can do Google. And for uh, 20 bucks. All right, uh, so as far as uh, calculating, doing it on a test, all you have to do is this little part right here. If you want to get fancy, some of you uh, like to get fancy with Excel, that would be the formula. I'm going to do